feel my vibe, I ain't gon' lie, bro, sometimes Tryna hit no preaching when I ride, I quit slide to that side Battling demons in my mind, made no mistake, I got my fringes But these laws gon' be my guys But these guys, be saying that they real, but they fake They call themselves Jakes, but they snakes I hope this don't offend you, I'm just sharing what I've been through Fake friends I can't mess with you like snake skin Shout out to my team, this a cool world we stay in Keep these commandments and you keep your brother, don't give in to Satan Angel City where I be, I ain't got no time for Smiling fake friends Smiling in my face but they snarl behind my back Bold with their opinions but ain't never got no facts Others they be plotting, demonize my reputation Watch these dragons, still destroy you using words and conversations Say y'all all about the people, but y'all up and left the camp Y'all said all for one and one for all, I thought that we was fam They say Matthew 18, it, I did that to no avail Now the whole congregation gotta feel it like it's braille But these guys, be saying that they real, but they fake They call themselves Jakes, but they snakes I hope this don't offend you, I'm just sharing what I've been through Fake friends I'm clean. I can't mess with you like snake skin Shout out to my team This a cool world we stay in Keep these commandments and you keep your brother Don't I'm, I'm happy because I'm ready to turn up with y'all. This has been one just blessing, blessed week. Yes, and yes. it's been great yes. just being able to be with you and fellowship with you all. So we're going to do it one more time again today. <laughs> As we usually do. <laughs> <laughs> All praises. All praises. So let's get it started. Y'all ready? Yeah. All right. Y'all want to stand up? <laughs> nah. Yeah, yeah y'all can stand on y'all feet and clap with us. The party ain't done. We starting it again, right? So let's let's stand up and party some more and give the most the day, high some huh? praises today.
praises to the most high. Ready. Shabbat Shalom. All oh, praise be to the Most High. What's up? What's going on? How y'all doing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's always a beautiful thing. <coughs> always a blessing to be, as the scriptures say, in the house of learning. All uh, oh, praise be to the Most High. Always a pleasure to be in the company of my people, Israelites. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Like the scriptures say, forsaking not the assembling of ourselves. So it's always a beautiful thing to be assembled, doing a holy convocation, which means a holy gathering uh, with the holy people of the Most High. Good to see y'all. Got visitors in the house. Man, all praise be. Well, not you. You're OG now. <laughs> But your grandbaby right here, all praise be to the most high. And, of course, just all of the rest of the, uh, another visitor right there. Okay. Yes, indeed. Look, you. 
She looking like, yeah, me. <laughs> All praise be to the most high. And of course, everybody else, man, is already official. You know, it's, it's a pleasure to see each and every one of y'all. Uh, let's get into it. The title of today's or this afternoon's lesson is Babylon is Falling. Babylon is falling. Okay, so question. What am I talking about? Or who am I talking about when I say Babylon? Okay, all right. All right. Okay. Question. What does Babylon mean? There you go. Confusion. <laughs> Sodom and Gomorrah, it's also called that as well. It's called Sodom. This place is all, also called spiritual Egypt. Definitely. Um, it being Babylon because there's a bunch of confusion in this place. All right. Instead of those that, uh, as we call them, the powers to be, saying, you know what? We have the opportunity to rule however we see fit. How about we do what the Bible says? How about we follow the laws of the God of this Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Let's do that, right? Seems that they're pretty fond of everything concerning the God of this Bible and his people. How do we know that? Because almost every movie that you see is about us. Literally. How many of you guys like superhero stuff? Yeah, chances are it's about us. How many of you guys like love stories and tragedies? Chances are it's our history. Almost everything that you're seeing is nothing that he's coming up with off the top of his brain. These are things that belong to us. Literally, our glory, our history. Watch this real quick. Go to the book of Romans. Chapter 9. See, it's a beautiful thing when, when you read the Bible with understanding. Because now it makes sense and it comes to life. It's nothing like sitting and listening to someone teaching you the Bible like in these bootleg churches, right? And you sitting up in there and it's not relatable at all. You sitting up here like, when is this going to be over with? Right? Right? You like, goodness. I know I used to sit up in there as a young man. I'm like, man, I got to do this for, for the rest of my life. There's better things I could be doing. I got to the point. When I became grown, I left the bootleg church. It's crazy. I was the black sheep. I left the bootleg church. Only thing that I, was, I would do, I would send my tithes, my tithes and my offering. Other than that, I, I had other things I felt like I needed to kind of do that was more pressing at the time. You know what I mean? But uh, all of that to say, it was such a treat for me. It's crazy because I really enjoyed it as a young, as a, as a kid. When I was about two and three years old, I remember starting to hear about the stories of the Bible and, and hearing about our forefathers. At that time, I didn't know that they were our forefathers. But I was, I was so intrigued and, 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 and took in by the stories. I connected with them, right? You know, but then after so many years of people saying that, yeah, these were God's chosen people. You're not quite that, you know? You know, you start kind of getting less and less interested. And more and more fluff began to begin, you know, to talk. You know, they began to teach. And uh, so I kind of disconnected. So by the time I became an adult, I'm like, man, I, you know, I got other things that I can be doing. But when I finally found out that this Bible was actually talking about us, all of a sudden, light switch hit on. Yeah, and things just, just came to life. So let's read this real quick. Romans chapter 9. Watch this. Um... Start at verse 1. Go ahead. The book of Romans, chapter 9, and verse 1. Uh -huh. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. Uh -huh. My conscience also 
Bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Ghost, meaning the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit? Is it that thing that make you start acting a fool and foaming at the mouth? That's not the Holy Spirit. That's a bunch of malarkey. Thing that make you want to shout. Yeah. Nah, the Holy Spirit is your conscience. It's your mind. It's, your, it's, the, it's the choices that you make, right? It's all of the good things in your spirit, the virtue in your spirit. Doing right by your brother and by your sister, right? Doing all of the things that you should do versus the things that you should not do, right? That's what that Holy Spirit is. Doing things according to the laws of the Bible, the commandments that are laid out, right? Some things we do automatically because we, we already have it embedded within our DNA and our spirit. We know certain things are right and wrong off top. But watch this. Read. Verse 2. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. He said, I, this is Paul speaking. He said, I got great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. Read. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ. Uh -huh. For my brother, uh -huh. my kinsman, according to the flesh. He said, my kinsman, according to the flesh. So he's not talking about some magical people. He's not talking about Wakanda. He's actually talking about a physical people, a real people, not fiction, right? Go ahead. Who are Israelites? Who are who? Who are Israelites? Didn't Kendrick say it? Huh? Almost every rapper saying it now. Almost every celebrity is saying it now. Almost every athlete is saying it now. Who are who? Who are Israelites? Israelites, read. To whom pertaineth. Now listen adoption. up. Whom pertaineth the what? The adoption. Adoption simply means to be chosen. Simply means to be chosen. We are the chosen people. We are the nation that was chosen above all the other nations, out of all the other nations. Read. And the glory. And the glory. Now, that's the part I wanted to get. This is the thing that you got to understand. There is no comparison at all in terms of the glory amongst the nations that's to be shared. There is no comparison. By far, there is one nation who literally can claim that glory of all of the wonderful things that they were able to do in history, all the wonderful moments that are noteworthy, that are worthy of writing a book or telling a story or writing a Hollywood movie on. All of those moments belong to guess who? They belong to us. So he's telling you right here, the glory belongs to us. All of these other nations got to go above and beyond to even try to come close to operate on the same level of what we operate on without even doing nearly as much work. I got a, 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 a former professional athlete in the back. I've heard you speak about it. Is it true or is it false, Ock? Absolutely true. You see a man twice your size and he wondering why he can't do anything with you. He a big old stocky eater, Mike. And he can't do nothing with this little bitty Jake. Because it's something that's been in us. It's in our DNA. And it's our history. You sit up there, you can go a couple of miles that way. There, there, there's a prestigious college called USC. University of Southern California. How many of you guys know about that? All right. Now watch this. They're the USC what? Trojans. So now, let me ask you a simple question. How many of you guys know what a Trojan is? And we're not talking about contraceptives. That's a lot of, you know, I'm keeping it real. We ain't talking about that. The original Trojan, what is it? It's a what? A Roman soldier. Not quite. The original Trojan, what is the original Trojan? Huh? De definitely during, during the time of the Greeks, so that was before the Romans. But who, who were they? Now watch this. I'm going to make it simple. We ain't got to go into all of the actions. I'm going to make it real simple for you. When you go up to USC, right, they would have you, because they got all of these statues, right? The only story 
that you probably somewhat remember because they put it in all of the cartoons, they put it in a few mo movies, right? Was the big old horse, right? So now, with all, with, with all of that being said, when you go up there, they got all of the, the uh, statues, right? And the men that are depicted in these statues are of what nation? The Edomites, they so-called white men, right? And you see them with a garb or the lack thereof, right? You see them with their helmets, and that's all you know. And that's one of the reasons why you would say like a Roman soldier. But the Trojans were a people. But watch this. You can go to a place called the Getty Museum, right? They got a big mural, right? From that time, and they show you two Trojan men fighting. Gladiators. They had been taken into captivity, but they were Trojans. And guess what they look like? They look like me and him boxing. Two, two, two men, they were naked, but two big buff Israelite men with afros. So now, that's just the tip of the iceberg. You want to talk about the Vikings? How many of you guys follow football? What does the Minnesota Viking look like? Huh? So-called white man. But, 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 but what specifically as far as how he presents himself? Does he have a beard? Huh? Does he have short hair or long hair? And what is it? It's braided up, ain't it? You think Edomites was rolling like that? Edomites been shaved, they've been booty faced since way back. Why do you have this Edomite? He's supposed to represent the Vikings, right? But yet he's got all of these cultural things that he's doing that's historically we did as a people, right? Because it's another lie. The Vikings weren't Edomites. The Vikings were made up predominantly of Israelites. Not only just any type of Israelites, but these were Israelites before all of the conquistadors that not only came back and forth from the east over into the west into the Americas, but it was also documented of their voyages and their trade. And it still can be found today in records. But they'll have you to believe like, oh, yeah, that time is foggy right there. We really don't know too much about the Vikings. Yeah, everything they're going to tell you that because they know they look like us. That's the glory we're talking about. All right. So watch this. Let's get into it. Babylon. Full of lies. All set forth to confuse you. You don't know up from down. You don't know what's what. They'll tell you in your face, we all Americans, all for one, one for all. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the public for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God. Now, we all supposed to be one nation in this country. How many of you guys have always felt since you've been here that you've been treated like so-called white folks? You've, been at, you've really been at one with them. Huh? And let me ask you another question. Under what God have we been, been under in this nation? What was the first God that you seen? What did he look like? A lot of us, we had, him, we had him in the living room. We had a big one in the living room. Go ahead. When I was a little guy in the early 60s, we used to have to say that prayer. Mm -hmm. In the morning, we would stand up, but my, um, I mean, I never knew my people because my mother was adopted. So, mm -hmm. but the people that we lived with, um, they had uh, Caesar Borgia yeah. in their house. We had a big old Caesar. We had we had him right there in the house. He was big. <laughs> yeah, we had him. I'm telling you. Go ahead. Yes, yes, ma'am. of him, Martin Luther King, and JFK. See? We all had that. 
in yep. any household. We weren't sure that was there. And they wanted us to remain docile. They wanted us to remain docile. So now, Babylon, confusion. And then you go back to ancient Babylon. It makes even more sense on how ancient Babylon was moving. But that's, you know, that's another story. We're going to talk about this particular Babylon. Now, watch this real quick. Let's get straight into it. Go to the book of uh, Revelation. Chapter 18. And we're going to start at verse 1. The book of Revelation, chapter 18 and verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils. Hold on. Babylon the great is fallen. Now, this right here says fallen. Right now, it is falling. <laughs> it is falling. Let's go ahead. Play that for me real quick. Play that video for me. The United States is doing poorly. It's been doing poorly for a long time, and it's getting worse and worse. Right now, our attention is almost exclusively on America's handling of the coronavirus pandemic with a sharp focus on the repeated blunders that have given the US the highest infection rate in the world. But that misses the bigger picture. There's a crisis that's been building for a long time that is, exists regardless of coronavirus. And that is uh, a, an economic crisis or a socioeconomic crisis, a crisis in healthcare and a crisis in government. These are indicators of what economists call a failed state a nation on the brink of collapse. The term is as grim as it sounds. It's usually reserved for countries ravaged by a corrupt government, civil war, or even genocide. Well, what are some of the key predictors of state failure? And one of the things that keeps coming up the most is essentially e ethnic conflict. To this day, African Americans have a lower average household income than white Americans. They face higher unemployment, employment discrimination, double standards in the criminal justice system, and racism in all its other forms. And the United States is increasingly less a multicultural state in any, in any positive sense, in any successful sense, and increasingly more a state divided along ethnic conflict. Now, why is that? Well, the headlines are police brutality, um, disenfranchisement of, of various uh, minorities, and there's something to those headlines. But minority groups are not the only ones feeling this growing inequality. While the US did until recently enjoy record low unemployment and a steadily growing economy, the top 1% absorbed most of the wealth. People in concentrated geographic areas are not having basic human needs and wants met. And, and that makes it incredibly unsurprising when you also see that these are many of the same hotspots where there are high levels of crime, which is a very good indicator of state failure. Despite America's status as the largest economy in the world, its infrastructure, education and healthcare have all been in consistent decline. The US is now 34th among all nations and perhaps the most critical measure of all, life expectancy. But if you actually add the amount of money its government spends per person with what people spend themselves, so public and private sector, it spends way more money than any other country on earth per person and has some of the worst health outcomes in the OECD. That's it. So it's crazy because oftentimes they just say black, black and white. It's not just black. We're not a black people. Our people in general, so-called black, so-called Hispanics, and then you can't even account for all the other Israelites that are not necessarily classified as black or brown, right?
one thing that you can you can bet on in terms of Israelites is that we're going through the same thing because we're a cursed people, right? So, with all of that being said, not to scare you, but this place is on a decline. It's falling. All praise be to the Most High. It's exciting and scary at the same time. But this Babylon is truly falling. They've done movies even as of recent. Uh, that was Olymp Olympius, but same thing. Babylon is falling. All right, get real quick. Go to the book of Micah, chapter 4. Absolutely. Can y'all turn the lights up? The water. Yes, indeed. No problem. Book of Micah, chapter 4 and verse 10. The book of Micah, chapter 4, verse 10. Yep. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion. Hold on. Said, be in pain and lab labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion. Hold on. Why would the Most High tell us to be in pain and labor to bring forth? Huh? Why would he say that? Anybody? Uh, book of Micah, chapter 4, and verse 10. Read it one more time. Verse 10. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion. So why, 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 okay, the daughter of Zion would have to be who? It would have to be us as a nation, right? Okay. So now, go ahead, Ock. You told us that it would be great tribulation and things we would have to go through. Is that the pain that we're speaking of to bear our cross? Is that okay, but why? In, what, what's, what are the implications in regards to what he's saying right here? He says, be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion. So stay in the truth, and I'm going to help you out. Sir. Read the next line. Like a woman in travail. Like a woman in travail. So we know that a woman in travail is talking about what? A woman in labor, right? Getting ready to give birth. So he's telling us as a nation to be like her. But he gives us a directive. He says, be in pain. How many of you guys like being in pain? How many of you guys say, hey, put me in pain. Give me some pain. You usually looking for some pain relief, right? You looking for some Tylenol or some Motrin or whatever you like to take. He says be in pain because you have to, you have to be told that in order to understand the mindset that you need to be in. If you're looking to escape pain, because one of the things that you also got to understand, I've heard your top speak of it many times. Pain itself is a what? It's an indicator. It's an indicator that there's something traumatic going on within your body. Right? So, oftentimes, the first thing we want to do is we want to escape the pain. We want to get rid of the pain. And a lot of times, we're willing to do whatever it takes. To get rid of the pain. But the Most High, what is he saying? He's saying, no. It's meant for you to be in pain at this point because there's something that does have, that has to happen. So when he says be in pain, what he's telling you, he's telling you to accept the pain that you're going to have to go through. Accept the pain that you're going through right now. It ain't comfortable. Is it? Is it, is it comfortable being in a place of uncertainty? Huh? Is it comfortable being inconvenienced? Is it comfortable not knowing where your next meal may come from? Go ahead. tried, just like the, the bowls and whatever precious stones are 
or, or, or crying. De- we know? definitely. So we have to go through that. Absolutely. That's part of it, you know, and to strengthen us. And Absolutely. To endure, you know. We Absolutely. need this. We need this. Absolutely. Not only do we need this, this is the path to get to the kingdom. So when he says, read it one more time. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion. Hold on. Be in pain and labor to bring forth. Again, how many women do we have up in here that have been in labor? Raise your hand. Quite a few of you guys. Now, is it going to help you to say, I give up? Huh? Does it help? Does it help you to say, you know what, forget about it? Or, or is it something at some point you say, okay, I got to accept this. This is something that I got to go through. And you're going through it for a good cause because at the end, you'll have that brand new baby. You'll have life that you have helped to bring into this world. But in the meantime, you have to make the decision to be okay enough to go through what you have to go through in order to labor to bring that child in, in, into this world. You have to accept the pain. You have to accept, uh, uh, accept the discomfort and the pressure. You got to accept it. So that's what he's telling us as Israelites. Because I do, I've seen many Israelites that find out who they are. Oh, we the, we the seed of Jacob, we the chosen people. And it's cool because they know they're Israelites, but they want to pick all of the, the, the sunflowery uh, 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 roses and, and sprinkles parts of being Israelites. They don't want no beef between Israelites, no gain, you know, all of these things that they deem that's a little bit more complex than they would have it to be. But they, they deem all of these things like they don't want to talk about our enemy. Everything is just love, Right? He's telling you it ain't going to just be love. It's going to be pain. It's going to be labor. We got to work. When you're going through that situation of trying to get that baby out, you got to work. Okay, after that pain pass, all right, get ready. The next one coming. On this one, I need you to push. He's telling you, accept that pain. And understand how important it is for you not to lay down. Now is the time for you to work harder than you've ever worked before. Go ahead and read. O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. Why? For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, Uh and thou shalt dwell in the field. Go ahead. And thou shalt go even to Babylon. Read on. There shalt thou be delivered. Where are you going to be delivered? Because a lot of folks is like, we got to get up out of here, out of America. But the scriptures say the curses shall follow you wherever you go. You don't think it's Israelites in Jerusalem right now that's cursed, that's going through hell? Because if you don't, I'll show you. You can't escape to Africa because guess what? They in Africa going through it too. You want to go in Asia? You can go to Asia too. They going through hell out there. You want to go to the islands? They in the Philippines too. Wherever you want to go, it's Israelites, and they ain't escaping these curses. Matter of fact, the curses are an indication of who they are. Because everywhere you go, if you're looking for the Israelites, look for the ghetto. Look for the disenfranchised. Straight up. It's crazy. We be, man, I ain't mean, we ain't the same. Nigga, you blood, you blood, you a blood, you wear red, I wear, I wear blue. You ain't the same. I'm black, you brown. It's all in, man. And we all in the hood. We all impoverished. We all don't know who the heck we are, right? And we all just going through the same stuff, acting the same way. But one thing that you got to understand, he said, look, when he said come up out of her, my people, he didn't necessarily mean physically. He said, you ain't going to be able to physically come up out of her just yet. I'm going to deliver you, like he said. But when he said, come up out of her, my people, he means you better mentally come up out of her. Spiritually, come up out of this. Yeah, you still physically here, but you better take your mind out the matrix. That's what he means. You got to decide, you know what, yeah, I'm stumping these grounds, 
but I ain't going to be nothing like the rest. This is what I'm going to stand on. This is what I'm willing to die for. That's what he's telling you. Go ahead and finish that out. There, the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. He's going to redeem us from the hands of our enemies. Why is he saying this? Because it's literally going to be war. There's literally going to be the king that you call Jesus Christ, that we know as Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach. And he's literally going to come and crack the sky like they said. How many of you guys, about 10 years ago, you didn't believe in UFOs? How many of you guys, it, it, there was a time where you didn't believe, but you've actually seen them now? I know some of y'all, you probably like, what the heck? What's so crazy, I, like I told you, there was a, a couple of years back, as a congregation, we saw UFOs on Manchester. Raise your hand if you was, if you was there that day. Keep them up high so, so people can look and see. We all saw the same thing. Now, what did we see? Huh? What, I mean, explain what they look like. It was real light, like, like, a, like a plane. Uh-huh. And it would move very, very swift, and it would stop and stand still. It was in, day, it was in the daytime? No, it was later on in the evening. So, so it, it, was, it was pretty dark, and you saw fireballs in the sky. How many yeah. about did you see? Uh, it was a couple of three of them. How, how, how did they move? They moved swift, really swift. You know, I, I've seen some since I've been in my new place. Oh, praise be to the most high. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, indeed. No, I saw one in the 70s. And it was night. It was at night. So I was in the middle of talking. Uh, at the time, I was at the Black Lives Rally. And we were going to Chicago for the Black Lives Matter. Right. Uh, the brother uh, and his wife, they were in the front seat. And he was driving. And I saw it. It, it had light also light on it. And, and if you blink your eye, it was gone. Wow. And, and it's like you blink your eye, it's back. So we got out the car. We, we got off the car and it took us to where we were. And it, it was just moving, you wow. know. I never believed that it was a UFO. All oh, praise be to the most high. So you know what these are, right? And I know this is not the class that's on that, but I just want to reference it. These are the chariots of the Heavenly Father. These are the same chariots that were there when we came out of Egypt, when we, when we were traveling through the wilderness. These are the same chariots that have always been there. And these chariots are coming to see what's going on, and they're ready for war. That's the reason why you see all of these films. How many of you guys saw Will Smith in Independence Day? You saw all of these different alien movies, right? And it's always about the United States leading the way to fight against these alien forces. Well, newsflash, you ain't going to be able to touch these forces because they're not aliens. <laughs> And we ain't fighting against them. They fighting for us. <laughs> That's the difference. So let's go from there. Go back. Book of Revelation. Uh, We're going to get back to 18, but before I go to 18, Get a little bit of 17. Go ahead and read that, starting in verse 1. Book of Revelation, chapter 17, and verse 1. Uh huh. There came one of the seven angels, which had the seven veils, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show thee, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. So, Babylon, it's called the great whore, this place that you call America. <laughs> The Bible calls it the great whore, right? So he says seven vials. Seven vials. 
what's in these vials? Because a vial is something that holds something that you can pour out. <laughs> so imagine what's in these vials, right? It says, come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Judgment. Judgment is coming to this place. Judgment is coming to this place. Go ahead, verse 2. Verse 2. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. Uh-huh. The king, hold on. The kings of the earth, with whom, with this great whore, the kings of the earth, all of the other leaders of this earth, have committed fornication. Spiritual fornication. Because we know that fornication is unlawful. I'm going to call it like it is. Unlawful sexual acts. But when, we, when you talk about spiritual fornication, what are we talking about? We're talking about idolatry. Dealing with other gods. Dealing with things that are contrary to the most high. Now, a lot of us, we take it lightly because we haven't yet understood all of the things that we've been caught up into. Watch this. The biggest holiday of the year in America is coming up. And what is it? What's the origin of Christmas? Guess where it start? It started. Babylon. Not even Neo-Babylon. Ancient Babylon. Nimrod. Tammuz. Semiramis. These things, you got folks with Christmas trees right now, and that symbolizes Nimrod's male member that they put presents under so that you can go and bow down to that tree when you go to pick up those presents. This is Babylon. Yes, sir. Mm. And the, the new type of Christmas tree is, it's a half of a Christmas tree. You can put it against the wall, and they say it's for people who don't have space for a whole Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, they cold-blooded. The, any, any type of way to make it convenient for you to break these laws, they're going to do it. <laughs> Watch this real quick. Go to. Uh, We're going to come right back to that. Let's keep that. Uh, go to the book of Psalms, uh, 137. I want seven through nine. <laughs> book of Psalms, chapter 137, verse seven. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem. Uh-huh. Who said, raise it. So hold on. These are the children of who? The children of Edom. Edom. Esau, the Edomites, right? Go ahead. And the dead Jerusalem who said, raise it. Uh -huh. raise which, it. which means destroy it. They were, they, they were rooting for our enemies, our other enemies, to destroy our temple and destroy our land. Go ahead. Even to the foundation thereof. Uh-huh. O daughter of Babylon, who are to be destroyed. Happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. Hold, so read that one more time because I think, I think they missed that. Read that one more time. Happy shall he be. At the top of eight. O daughter of Babylon. So who is Edom? Who is Edom? The daughter of Babylon. So we're not talking about ancient Babylon or neo-Babylon. We're talking about the daughter of Babylon. We're talking about none other than Edom, so-called white folk. That's why even in the 60s, what were they saying in the 60s? Even if you were a Muslim, even if you were a part of, 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 of the Black Panther Party, they were saying what? They were calling America what? They were still calling America Babylon back then. Babylon. Were they not? You were there. 
Somebody knew something. Babylon. And then the Bible tells you, make no mistake, we're talking about Edom. These so-called white folks, America. That's what we're that's what we're talking about right here. So when we say Babylon is fallen, Babylon been failed. If you want to talk about ancient Babylon, Babylon, ancient Babylon is not a power in this world right now. But guess who is? This place that we call America, this is not just Babylon. This is the daughter of Babylon, a.k.a. Babylon the Great. The great whore. It's a free-for-all here in Babylon. Was that all of that? Verse 9. Uh-huh. Happy shall he be that take it and dash it thy little ones against the stone. Go, go from there. Go to the book of Amos. I want Amos chapter, uh, I think chapter 9. Amos chapter 9. I want 8 and 9. Chapter 9, verse 8 and verse 9. Amos chapter 9 and verse 8. Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful king. Uh huh. And I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. Woo, hold on. You thought I was making this up? He said, now, we all know how sinful of a kingdom this is, right? I don't have to tell you too much. Your top did an excellent job last night at exposing a whole lot of the experimentation that they've been doing on us. We talk about all of the other things that are going on on a day-to-day -day basis, the homosexuality, the physical fornication. The list goes on and on. This is a very sinful nation. This is the most sinful nation on the face of the earth. While they sit there and point the finger and shake their heads at other nations on how corrupt they are, this is by far the most corrupt nation on the face of this earth. Read it one more time, Mark, from the top of eight. Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom. The Most High is looking at America. While they sitting up here, God bless America, my home sweet home. Sitting up there, uh, uh, what's the uh, uh, song that they be singing during the games at the beginning of the games? Uh, oh, the Star Spangled Banner. Uh, oh, beautiful. All of that nonsense. He said, I don't care about none of that. Pray for America. Yeah. He said, I pray not for them. <laughs> he said, if you, I ain't praying for them. He said, they not, they not of me. But watch this. Sinful kingdom, read. And I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. He said he will destroy it from off the face of the earth. This place is about to go up like fireworks. All of this building, all oh, praise be to the most high. All of this building is being done. All of this building is being done. It doesn't matter. They, I mean, they building some beautiful things. But all of it is coming down. It's coming down. Read. Saving. Thou will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob. The Lord. He said, the only thing that I ain't going to utterly destroy, I'm not going to destroy y'all. But, but notice the choice of words. I will not utterly. In other words, somebody got to get some get right, though, in Israel. Yeah, somebody, somebody, somebody got to get some judgment. Watch this. Go ahead and read. For lo, I will command, and I will sit. The house of Israel among all nations. He said he's sifting us amongst all the nations. Ain't that what he's doing? Man, we didn't got so many calls in the last couple of years. Africa, India, man, you name it. They, they in the, the islands. They in Samoa. They, they, they all over the place. All over the place. I'm an Israelite. Everywhere. How all of a sudden is everybody popping up and they got camps everywhere? How is this happening? Because the word is true. That's why. Read. Like as corn is sifted in the seed. Uh-huh. Yet, shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. He said, because we be worried. Well, what if they not Israel? What if I'm not Israel? Man, I want, I, I'm scared. I might not be an Israelite. My, my, my great, 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 great grandpa might not be one of us. 
I'm scared. He said, ain't, 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 ain't nothing going to fall through. Everything that's supposed to be caught, it's going to be caught. Let your spirit bear witness with this word. Don't worry about nothing else. Keep these commandments. Watch this, verse 10. I need that. Verse 10. All the sinners of my people. Now, this is heavy right here, and this dismantles bootleg Christianity. Read this one more time. All the sinners. Hey, an uh, emphasis on all. All the sinners. All the sinners of who? Of my people. Of my people, read. Shall die by the sword. All the sinners of my people, meaning what? Of God's people. Because everybody says, oh, we're God's people. Anybody can be of God's people. If we, if we, if we believe in Jesus Christ, we're all of God's people, right? Well, that doesn't make sense in accordance to this particular scripture but because he says within his people, there are sinners and they're going to die by the sword because he's talking about a physical people. He's talking about our people, us. Many Israelites who refuse to come back to their senses, come back to the book of their fathers, come back to the God of their forefathers. And he said every last one of them are going to die by the sword, die by all of the things that are happening in this world right now. Does that scare you? Some of y'all, y'all ain't faced. I hope you are, though. Because guess what? The scriptures say to what? The fear of the Most High is the beginning of wisdom. It's that initial fear to say, you know what? Ooh, I need to get myself right. You, you don't know everything. I know it's scary, but it's just enough to say, you know what? I need to get right. It ain't nothing. I, I'm going to tell y'all, and it's crazy because the Most High did you a favor. A lot of my young people, you ain't missing nothing out there. Some of y'all done already clubbed. Oh, for, you, done, you done did enough clubbing by the age of 21. <laughs> Enough partying, enough drinking and smoking and acting the fool and fornicating. You didn't did, oh, now come on, we keep it real up in here. You didn't did enough of that by the age of 21. You probably started in 14. But, we keep it real with you. Coronavirus kind of did you a favor. Because there ain't really no clubs to go to right now. You ain't missing nothing out there. Most high said it's time to come and he says, it's kind of time, time to be a part of the real team. It's time to come back for the real squad. It's time to put in this work. All praise be to the most high. Real talk. It ain't nothing else out here. Go ahead, Ock. Oh, oh, I thought you had some. All praise be to the most high. <laughs> Go ahead and finish that. Verse 10. Verse 10. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say... Evil should not overtake nor prevent them. And that's what they think. The evil ain't going to overtake or prevent them, meaning, you know, oh, it don't matter, man. I'm living my life, man. Ain't nothing about to do. Touch me. I'm about to I'm gonna take care of my own. I got my guns. I got this. I got that. Most I said, okay, you keep thinking like that. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Huh. That's, yeah, that's a doctrine that some Israelites teach. Um, here's the thing. Um, here's the thing. They'll, basically what they're saying is, okay, one-third obviously are going to make it in. Then that two-thirds that the Bible speaks of, as a matter of fact, give me the two-thirds scripture too. The two-thirds are not going to initially make it in, but as Israel gets into the kingdom and they start having children, those two-thirds are actually actually going to be born and um, I guess kind of like grafted in and given that opportunity to have eternal life. But here's the thing. Then what would be the reason for any of us going through what we're going through in terms of, 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 of laboring to keep these commandments and going through all of the suffering? That's the same thing with Esau, right? So the scripture that we just read in Amos that would have been the number one scripture I would have went to, but we just read it so I won't go back. He says, all of the sinners of my people should die by the sword. There's going to be judgment for the sinners. Same thing with Esau. The reason why Esau is hated of the Most High is because 
he didn't do what was necessary to hold on to eternal life. The birthright was his. He gave that up for, 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 some, for some uncooked meat and stew. And the Most High said, I hate you for that. I gave you something that not everybody can have, only you. It was exclusive to you, and it would make you the greatest people on the face of the earth. It would, call, it would separate you clearly from every other nation because no other nation would be able to connect to what we were originally supposed to be. We were originally created to live forever, right? That's why when Adam and Eve did what they did, that caused death to come into the picture. And even then, they lived 900 and something, and then it just began to diminish as the years went on. Now we live and we'd be blessed if we reach anything near 100, right? So, most High say, you can't have heaven here in this wicked world and think I'm going to give you heaven on the other side. It ain't going to work like that. But go ahead. Give me the two-thirds uh, scripture first. Right. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, uh -huh. two parts therein shall be cut off uh -huh. and die, but the third shall be left therein. So, that's, that's the official one-third versus the two-third. Cut off. Cut off from being a part of the nation. Watch this. This is kind of like the nail in the coffin. Read that. Revelation. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 10. And that the devil that deceived them was cast like a fire brimstone. So hold on. The devil that, that deceived them, we're talking about a specific devil. We're talking about so-called white folks. Eat them, right? Go ahead. Where the beast and the false prophet are, uh -huh. and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So if we got a torment, right, that's going to last forever, then then how, how how is it that they're going to... um escape eternal damnation. How, how does that work? You get what I'm saying? So that, that's a false doctrine. And uh, on another day, we'll cover it, you know, even in more detail. But there's no way in the world. If that be the case, we can all just be as wicked as we want to be right now and forget all of this, and we still going to make it in because we Israelites. We just got to wait a little bit longer. I ain't bet, I'm not willing to bet on that. Go ahead, get it. Uh, we're going to go back to Zechariah 13 and verse 9. Uh -huh. It says, and I will bring them the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call, excuse me, they shall call on my name and I will hear them and I will say it is my people and they shall say the Lord is my God. Nowhere did he say anything about that two thirds coming back into the picture. So it's, it's only going to be one third that's going to that's do what's necessary. Just like the scripture also says, it says, this world is for many, the next world is going to be for few. So nah, not at all. <laughs> all praise be to the most high. Let's get back into it. Revelation. Revelation, chapter 17, verse 2. Uh huh. When the kings of earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of our fornication. Uh-huh. So when we talk about uh, the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication, you know, that's talking about the philosophies, the politics, all of those things that not only are exclusive now to America, but literally pretty much the whole earth, all of the other different kingdoms, nations, have bought into those same, you know, policies and, 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 and ideologies, so on and so forth. You know, you got Christmas that's being celebrated pretty much everywhere now. A among nations that don't even share the same faith, right? Go ahead. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast. Scarlet-colored beast. What color is scarlet? Red, keep talking about this same red beast, this red dragon, this red serpent. Why is everything red? 
Why, when I tell you to think about the devil and what he looks like, you see a man in a red jumpsuit. Because it's talking about the red nation. It's a red nation of people. Edom. Adawam, which means red. They are known as the red people. The reason why they are red, because they lack melanin. They have very little melanin, and you literally see the blood showing forth through their skin. And they don't have melanin as much as we have melanin. That causes us to look brown, different shades of brown, right? So he's telling you who this nation is. This is a nation that's been marked physically. Go ahead. Full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Seven heads and ten, ho uh, ten horns. And that's historically talking about a number of things. Those seven heads are talking about different kingdoms in the past that came before this American kingdom. All right? Those ten horns are actually still in play, and it kind of swaps out from different nations. These are other nations that have really never gotten their full chance to actually have the type of dominion, but they get an opportunity along with this particular beast called America to kind of rule the earth. Go ahead. We, we call them today uh, the European Union, the EU. They go under a, a few different names. Read. One was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand uh -huh. full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Watch this. Read verse 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Mystery Babylon the Great. At one time it was a mystery and it's no longer a mystery. We know, we know exactly, exactly who it is that we're talking about. Talking about America the truth. Go ahead. I saw the woman drunken with blood of the saints. Uh huh. And with the Dr hold on, drunken with the blood of who? Of the saints. The blood of the saints. Now, how is America drunken with the blood of the saints? First and foremost, who are the saints? Let's find that out real quick. Go to the book of Psalms 148. Stay there because we're going to come back there. Hold that. But, but go to Psalms 148 and get uh, verse uh, 14. Let's find out who the saints are. The word saint. What does the word saint even mean? It means holy. Saint comes from the same root as sanctuary or sanctify, right? Something that is set apart in holiness. These saints are a holy people, the only people on the face of the earth that have historically been called the holy people throughout time. Watch this, read. Psalms 148, verse 14. Uh -huh. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints. Even of the children of Israel. So who are the saints? The children of Israel. That's why, why in the book of Psalms he said, I'm going to take the name of Israel away from the earth. They won't remember their history. They won't remember who this people is. And they did that purposely. He, we have everything in terms of who we were or all the things that happened, our stories. It's all before us. It's in the Bible. It's in the movies. It's in history, right? They'll tell you all of these things, but yet they'll never tell you that these were Israelites. And they'll never tell you that these Israelites are now still here. And they're at the bottom of society right now. That's what they don't tell you. So you have a hard time putting two and two together. But let's go back. Book of Revelations chapter 17. Start at, uh, at the top of verse 6 again. Book of Revelations chapter 17, verse 6. I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints uh -huh. and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And the martyrs of Yahweh Shah, those that died because they were followers of Christ, meaning followers of the anointed. That's where the word Christian comes from. You got all of these folks that got the nerve, have the audacity to call themselves Christian today, and they ain't putting their lives on the line whatsoever. Sit up here and it's laughable. They'll make it seem like it's so hard being a bootleg Christian. It ain't hard at all because the scriptures say, broad is the way to destruction. Christianity is the biggest religion on the face of the earth. Seriously, it ain't hard being a bootleg Christian. Now, it's hard being a real Christian. 
It's hard being a real follower of Hamashiach, Yahawashai, the one that walked this earth that they put on a cross and crucified for real. It's really hard following him for real and keeping these commandments. People got a hatred that they can't even tell you where it comes from when you tell them that you a follower of these commandments. Where does that come from? Off top, there's a disassociation. People no longer want to be next to you when you tell them that you stand for this right here. Why is that? That's why you got to have a, a certain type of boldness about you when you say, you know what? I'm locked in. I'm going to be sold out for this. Because it ain't no half-stepping. You half-stepping, you're going to fall off the line. Real talk. You got to be all in and... Like he said, he said, look, man, don't be lukewarm. If you lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. I'd rather you be all in or all out. So, with all of that being said, real martyrs, meaning those that actually lost their lives, when you talk about the Bible, you would not have a Bible today that you can read in your language had it not been for all of those that gave their lives so that this thing could be interpreted in various different languages. Almost every language on the earth, if not every language on the earth, you can find one of these written in it. And, and I believe it because I went to Ghana and I got, there's various different languages in Ghana. And amongst the people that I went to, their language wasn't the privilege, uh, 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 privilege, I'm making up words. Pre thank you. Prevalent language. And yet I was able to go and get a, a, a Bible in their language. This Bible, how many books do you know that are trans, it must be a big deal. Must be a big deal. Still the number one selling book, 2020. What compares? So when the Bible says that this country is drunken with the blood of the saints, it's it's been a whole lot of blood shed here in America. Not to even mention all of the Israelite deaths that are happening on a day-to-day -day basis. Not only the police shooting us down like dogs, right? But you also want to talk both, both so-called black and brown people getting shot down. But even above all of that, how they killing you systematically. They poisoning you through the food and the water, the air that you breathing, stuff that they dropping on you. Come on, all of the stuff that he brought out last night, you be in somebody's bus station and you don't even know they done popped something and then sent. Man, that's why you need the Heavenly Father. You can't do this on your own. You cannot do this on your own. Go ahead and read. I saw her, and when I saw her, I wanted with great admiration. Go ahead. And Andrew said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? <laughs> why <are> you marveling? <laughs> Why are you marveling? Go ahead. I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. So that's going into Rome. Real quick, I want you to see something real quick. Go to um, Revelation chapter 12. Um. Start at verse 14. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 14. Yep. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness and to her place, where she is nourished for a time and time and half a time in the face of the serpent. You see that? Go ahead. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water uh -huh. as a flood after the woman. He might cause her to be carried away of the flood. It's all these lies, all of this propaganda. Right? A lot of our people, we fall for it. We get carried away in the lies. We don't know what to believe. We don't know who to trust. Don't know who to trust. Go ahead. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. So what is that talking about when it says the earth opened up? The earth. This earth literally opened up. Archaeology. All types of things that show you the truth. This Bible is a part of that. Ancient scrolls that are still being found on a day-to-day -day basis 
which continue to prove the validity of this Bible and the truth about you being an Israelite and about all of the conspiring nations that have conspired to keep that a secret. It's so many things that you look at within yourself that you think are so cool, so important, but nothing is more important than the fact that they've hid from you that you're the greatest people on the face of this earth. It ain't nothing greater than that. The people that have all of the money are able to do so in the name of being Jews, being Israelites. They call themselves by your name, by your birthright. For everybody that's trying to get the bag, to hell with the bag, the earth belongs to us. They got you chasing a bag when the whole earth belongs. Everything they got is because of you. Thus saith the Lord, thus saith history. So that's that earth bringing out the truth. And it's everywhere because they even tell you, your own enemies put it in films and television shows all day, every day. Whether you watch an American Dad, Family Guy, whatever kind of show you like, it's on there. You, you like old shows, good times. You like uh, westerns, they was telling you in that. Oh, yeah, the, uh, uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the Indians, yeah, they're the ten tribes. The lost. Anywhere you go, they're telling you the truth of who you are. But go ahead and read. This is the part 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. Uh-huh. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Go ahead, who what? Which keep the commandments of God. Uh-huh. And at the testimony of Jesus Christ. So it's, this is what you got to understand. It's been a war on Israel. Understand that. It's been a war on Israel because they've been doing everything that they can as a nation of people to keep us under their foot, to keep us under their rule. But more specifically, what you have to understand is now there is going to be an openly concentrated effort to not only destroy Israel, but more so to destroy those Israelites that have decided that I'm going to do, thus saith the Lord. I'm going to keep these commandments. And they're not going to just come out and say, yeah, by the way, I'm coming. Nah, it's not going to work like that. They're going to pretend like everything is good and build a case because this is what they're doing now. Oh, yeah, another attack. This was like a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, a Hebrew Israelite uh, 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 attacked an, uh, a white man with a machete. All kind of propaganda and nonsense. They never do that with white folk. How come they don't highlight them like they highlight us? It's way more bootleg Christians doing wickedness and killing folks and organizations like the KKK, Ku Klux Klan, who's a, a known Christian organization. But yet they want to talk about us being terrorists when we ain't, we ain't hurt nobody. We just speaking, thus saith the Lord. I'm not going to apologize for speaking this truth. That's what I ain't going to do. And I'm going to be very careful. I'm going to be very careful. Not necessarily just careful because I'm trying to be wise to preserve my life. I'm talking about more so being careful so that I don't offend my God. I don't want to offend my God. I'm, like he said, if you're ashamed to, 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 to accept me and speak of me, I'm going to be ashamed to, 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 to um, I know I'm butchering it. Before my father, I'm going to be ashamed to, uh, yeah, confess you before my father. Go ahead. Absolutely. 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 It's a time right now where we really got to spiritually gird up. Go back to Revelation chapter um, 18. I'm not going to hold y'all much longer. Revelation chapter 18. It's always so much with all of this. As, as a matter of fact, before we get to 18, get 17 and uh, get 16. 17 and 16. Book of Revelation chapter 17 and verse 16. Uh-huh. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast. So these six horns are other nations that are a part of that council, right? That that still stand today, which we don't have a seat in. 
They have all of these exclusive meetings on what's going to happen in the world, right? Now, they've been with the beast for so long, but now what's happening is, watch this. This is what's happening right now. Read it one more time. Out. And the ten horns, which thou sawest upon the beast, uh -huh. he shall hate the whore. They're going to hate the whore. So now, we're talking about the beast. The beast is the entirety of who? The beast is who? Edom, the, the whole white race, so-called white folk. Now, white folks are not just in America, right? Right? All, all over, but more specifically, some of the main countries, even in Europe, right? Right? So now, these ten horns that are upon the beast, they're part of the beast, they're going to uh, begin to hate the whore. Who's the whore? That's what's happening right now. They're, for so long, they were all in cahoots. They were all on one accord, and they were prospering. Now, the nation of Edom has become more at odds with themselves than ever before. On every level, on a macro level, when you talk about from nation to nation, kingdom to kingdom, they're becoming more at odds and siding with Various different sides. And even within the United States itself. Literally, the, the whole fake Republican and Democratic beef is becoming a, a serious thing now. They've been, they've been the liberals, the uh, what's the, the right wing versus the, yeah, versus the conservatives. Oh, that's you already know what I'm about to go to. I'm about to get there in a second. Far right, conservative. Absolutely. Far left, liberals and Democrats. Absolutely. Go ahead and finish reading that, and then we're gonna go to Mark after that. Thou sawest upon the beast, and he shall hate the whore, uh -huh. and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her. It's with gonna fire. be war. Esau's gonna be fighting himself. It's already getting ready to happen. They've already started talking about, well, I'm siding with China. Well, I'm siding with, uh, with, with, with them. I'm siding with them. Because remember, Russia is Esau. R Russia and America has been at odds for a long time. They had that Cold War. It ain't going to continue to be cold forever. Watch this. Read verse 17. For God has put in their hearts. To fulfill his will. So who, who, who's making this thing happen? The most high is the one making this happen. Absolutely. Just look, watch this real quick. Now, go to Mark real quick. Chapter 3. Mark chapter 3, I want uh, 24 through 26. Mark chapter 3, verse 24. And if a kingdom be divided against itself. Uh, listen up. If a, if a kingdom be divided against itself, what? That kingdom cannot stand. It can't stand. Go ahead. And if a house to be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. It cannot stand. Read. And if Satan rise up against himself uh -huh. and be divided, Go ahead. he cannot stand. But he has an end. It's the end. The end is near. <laughs> the end is near. They are at odds with one another. That's what Yahweh Shah was prophesying. I mean, it was something that's not just specific to what's happening right now, but it's always happened. The only time where it's not going to happen is in the kingdom that's going to last forever, which is going to be the kingdom in which Yahweh Shah is going to rule. And he's going to be the king of kings. All right. So let's go to Revelation chapter 18. One more time from uh, verse 1. Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. The earth was lightened with his glory. Mm -hmm. He cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. It had become the habitation of devils, 
in the hold of every foul spirit, in a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. It's just getting worse and worse. It's getting worse and worse. Look, I, I was watching, what was that? I was at my job, and they had on BET, and that award came on. And um, I forgot which award it was, one of the recent awards. And I looked on the screen, and even just seeing BET later, I don't watch BET. I know they got Martin and stuff on, you know, you know, but like BET, like the new stuff, is raw. Like all of them shows, them um, just full of homosexuality, man. Just it's it's raunchy. So they was doing that show, that award show, and it wasn't no bleeping. They they just all out cussing, just vulgar in, on BET now. And it was just females, just no shame, none. No, this is an award, so we're going to bleep it out. We're going to lighten it up. It was just, this. I think this was right before the election, because after they done shook every bit of booty they could shake, then it was like, go vote. Go vote. It's, it, this, when I tell you that it's, it's just, it, it's, how much worse can it get in regards to just how disgusting this place has become? Yes, ma'am. Is just from putting him where he is to do what he's doing. Yep. It's a wonderful thing. Uh, it's a wonderful thing uh, to see them go through what they're going through and to fall. Uh, praise the Most High. All praise be to the Most High. <laughs> <laughs> all praise be to the Most High. Go ahead. Verse 2. Verse 3. Verse 3. All nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacy. Everybody is rich because of America. Everybody's rich doing business with America. Seriously. Go ahead. I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. Here you go. Come out of her. Come out of her physically? Nah, we ain't going to be able to physically come out of her until... We are literally delivered from out of her. But guess what? You need to come out of her mentally, spiritually, right? And your mind is a manifestation of your spirit. How are you thinking? What are you constantly exposing yourself to? You got to really detach from the ideology of this place, man. It's, it's like the scriptures say, the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. But the ways of the wicked seduceth him. What does that mean? You can want to do the right thing. You can be taught to do the right thing. But you can choose to be in the wrong crowd, in the wrong environment. And chances are, if you stay there long enough, because they're the majority, and you allow yourself to be susceptible to the things that they're doing, you're going to end up doing the things that they do. You're going to end up behaving in the ways that they behave. That's why it's important because a lot of people don't understand this. You got a whole lot of Israelites that speak against it and don't really understand. When he says, forsaking not the assembling of yourselves, it's because of that scripture. He's letting you know we're sheep. If you're in the midst of those that are saying, look, I'm following these commandments, then you're going to be inclined to follow the commandments. If you're in the midst, I'm, I'm telling you, because I, I, man, I've been there. If, if you got homies and the homies is pulling licks, then you're going to be pulling licks. If you with homies and homegirls is playing the field, messing with this one and messing with that one, you're going to end up messing with this one and messing with that one. 
If you're in a company of those that like to partake in various different drugs and paraphernalia, then guess what? Soon enough, it's going to get to you. You're going to take a puff. Go ahead. Absolutely. You don't want to be unequally yoked. You want to put yourself in a place where you, you, you're not going to be seduced to do things that are contrary to what it is that these laws would have us to do. Bottom line. But watch this. Read. But you got to make a decision to come up out of her. Go ahead. Come out of her, my people. They be not partakers of her sin, and they receive not of her plagues. Receive not of her plagues. I didn't know how to feel about this whole coronavirus thing, this COVID-19, this SARS. But I tell you one thing that I do understand. I don't care what Esau is doing. The Most High is ultimately the one in control. And the Most High said that he was going to send plagues. So it's safe to say that this is a plague, one of many to come. He said, if you don't want to partake in these plagues, <laughs> come out of her. Most High said, now remember in the scripture, he says, look, for those that were, 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 were in need of healing, he said, stop sinning. First thing he say, sin no more. You'll be delivered from whatever judgment of, of illness or plague that may come upon you if you first and foremost understand that your vulner vulnerability to those things, you become more susceptible to those things when you are not in the right spirit. A lot of us, we don't believe that. But I know that for a fact. Because you, you have the strength and the ability within your mind to decide whether or not you're going to get sick or not a lot of times. How many of you guys have ever done that? You can, and it's the same thing, like some of y'all might have not done that, but you've done that with some drink. You can drink the same amount of drink, you drink it, and you, like, you tell yourself, I'm going to be good, and you was good. Another night you said, man, I'm going to get faded. And you drunk about the same amount, you was toe up. Raise your hand if you'd have been through that. Your mind has the ability <laughs> to do these things. Go ahead, Ock. <laughs> indeed, indeed. So we got to make a choice. We got to make a choice. Go ahead and read. We almost done. Verse 5, for sins have reached unto heaven. And God hath remembered her iniquity. Most high has remembered this place's iniquities. He ain't forgot. He said it ain't even been a whole day. He said a day is, is as a thousand years. A thousand years is as uh, but a day in the eyes of the most high. It ain't even been a thousand years. It ain't even been a thousand years. No, nowhere near. So he said, I remember everything that America has done to the Israelites. And it's time for payback. <laughs> Straight up, I wouldn't want to be America. So I'm not sitting around here talking about, I'm an American. I ain't no American. That ain't nowhere on my paperwork. Call me a United States citizen. I ain't never seen. How many of y'all, have you ever seen American on any of your paperwork? Heck no. You're, you're legally not an American anyway. At all. So watch this read. For a sins of reached unto heaven. God hath remembered her iniquity. Reward her, even as she rewarded you. Ooh, how did she reward us? How did America reward the Israelites? How have we been rewarded? Ooh, wait. For all of the people that's like, nah, yeah, that just ain't right. It just ain't right. I don't know about all that. I mean, as far as I understand, as far as so-called Black and brown people, and all our people scattered abroad, we done, we done went through some pretty horrible things. We continue to go through some pretty horrible things. If you just want to talk about our water supply alone. <laughs> yes, sir. Honestly, sir, you know, um, just based on two things for me, what they did to our ancestors is enough for me to go and also, they, what they,
go. <laughs> Everything, he said, reward even as she rewarded you. There's a lot of things that have been done against us as a people. But watch this. That ain't it. Read. And double unto her. Double according to her work. Double unto her. Double according to her works. Double. Can you imagine double of what we went through? It's, it's amazing that we survived what we went through. Can you imagine double? I'm, 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 watch this, because we're not even, I'm not going to even go, take it there, there yet and talk about just the enslavement of our people, how we've been treated that's documented in history, right? You're talking about so-called blacks, so-called Latinos, uh, 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 Israelites scattered throughout all of the different places that have been disenfranchised and oppressed. But let's just talk about your life. How hard enough has your life been? How many nights have you cried because you didn't know how you was going to make it through the week? Imagine your life being double hard of what it's been. What would your life be if it was double harder than what it has been? Huh? Can you imagine that? How many of y'all have went through some hard times in your life that, that, that you do not want to go through again? Can you, how many of y'all can actually imagine going through something twice as worse as everything that you've gone through? <laughs> it's best for us to stay out the way, man. That's why he said everybody that's going to be joined hand is going to be thrust through. He said, get out of Edom's way. Y'all sitting up here, we ain't even focused on Esau. That's why some people, they get it misconstrued because we got to teach our people and show our people who the enemy is. But we're not about to go out there. We ain't out there on, on, on the Sabbath when we teach you. Man, F you, Edomite. No, man, get all of that. Man, we ain't doing that. That ain't our job. Our job is to help to, to teach our people and show our people the error of their ways. Now, when we do say things that we say because we're trying to make sure that you guys understand and you guys believe. Other than that, they're not worth my energy. I want to stay out the way because the Most High got something raw for them coming. Yes, ma'am. And we and, and our people are still having such a hard time. Just being, just being solid, and 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 like I said, man, and um, get ready to end. But it means everything to your salvation to make sure that you that you're in the right company of people. I can't, say, especially, and this ain't even just the young folks. This is to this is to everybody. Make sure you're in the right company of people. It's it's more important. It's more important than anything that you can own. Go ahead, I. You know, we were talking about, you know, that Esau will pay double. Uh. You know, um, but we got to understand that you say that we got to stay away from Edom, right? Mm -hmm. That means that if we don't stay away, that means we're paying double. But uh, uh, my point here is that, it's like, for example, Christianity, right? That mm -hmm. people who stay in Christianity will pay double mm -hmm. because you got to understand that the Christian says unification is salvation. But for, you know, as an Israelite, we know they're wrong because... In reality, I mean, if you think about it, uh, the Most High, who's going to have vengeance against who? If they're one unification of the whole world. <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. And then at the end, in, in, in the last chapter of Revelation, he tells us that we're going to rule over the nations. If, if we're all one, then who's going to be ruling over who? That doesn't make sense. He lets it be known that we as Israel, we will be rulers over the, na over the nations. So. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. The, um, we're going to finish this off. Um, go ahead and finish that. Verse 6. Verse 6. For her, even as she rewarded you, and doubled unto her, double according to her work. Uh huh. And the cup which she has filled, filled to her double. Filled to her double. Read. How much she has gloriously glorified herself uh-huh. and lived deliciously, mm-hmm. so much torment and sorrow give her. Woo. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall <laughs> see no sorrow. America, th- and, they, and they fool themselves into believing that they're not going to see an end. It's, it's here. Verse 8. Verse 8. Therefore, shall her plagues come in one day. One day. Go ahead. Death. Death. And morning. And morning. And famine. When it says one day, remember, one day, we're not necessarily talking about an actual day. but We're talking about a dispensation of time. But when it says one day, what it's saying is a short amount of time. All of this stuff is happening in a very short amount of time. For years, America has thrived. Now everybody's talking about making America great again. Why would they need to say make America great again if America wasn't already on a decline? They're letting you know what time it is. It's already falling. They're trying to revive it. When you say make America great again, they're saying let's revive America. Ain't no reviving this beast. It's a wrap. Go ahead, finish that off. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death, and mourning, and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong the Lord God who judges. It's fire coming. It's fire coming. On so many different levels. Go ahead. I'm going to get something real quick. And he said the judgment shall come in one day, but that being a time span, not a literal day. I'm going to get one place. Get Revelation Go. chapter 9, one of these curses. One of these plays. Get that for me. I'm gonna skip down reverse one, and we're gonna skip down to reverse three, and we'll skip down to reverse five. Revelations chapter nine, verse one. Read. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to his, excuse me, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Right, which started to bring forth the darkness, which brought forth the locusts. Skip down and read verse four. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of the Most High in their foreheads. Read on. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but they should be tormented. They should be what? Tormented. How long? Five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he sticketh, excuse me, when he striketh the man. Mm-hmm. And read verse 6. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. So that was five months when that plague is to come in the future that men got to go through. So all these plagues coming, all these veils is for time. We got some time that these things will be coming upon the earth. It's going to be torturing all those who ain't keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments. Those keeping the laws, we ain't got nothing to worry about. Same thing with our forefathers and foremothers, literally in the land of Egypt. Oh, they were doing right. Hey, the children of Israel, we was good. But unto Egypt, they received the plagues. So likewise, for all our people that don't disconnect and come out of her, you'll receive those plagues along with your enemies. Until you repent and do that which is right according to the Most High. Right, we're going to finish it off right here. 18, and I want uh, verse 9 and 10, and, and then we're done. Relation 18 and 9. Kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. So they're going to see America burning from overseas. This place is going to be burning, destroyed. Go ahead and read. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, uh-huh. saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city. For in one hour is thy judgment come. In what? For in one hour. One hour. That's, that's a lot less time than one day. So if it, it took a day for the plagues to hit, right, which is a short amount of time, all of these things, you're in that day right now. The hour is coming. It's going to be even shorter time when it actually falls completely. And it says all of the other nations are going to be 
tripping like, man, I can't believe America's really gone. America's really gone. <laughs> so understand what's, what's going down and what's happening, and we got to get ourselves together. All praise be to the Most High. <laughs> All praise be to the Most High. We got any uh, announcements? Any announcements? Gotta get myself together because I 